Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel on this rather grey and cloudy morning uh, which is rather abnormal for this area but uh, I'm not going to try and shoot a sunrise this morning it's already too late anyway and there's going to be no sunrise and probably no sunset tonight but I've got a different plan today uh, I want to see if I can get some uh, images of wildflowers um, it's late spring, early summer here and we've had a bit of rain, roughly 10 millimeters of rain so I know some of the plants are starting to flower so rather than wait for, for them to all flower like I did last year and then missing some of them I'm going to take a walk today and see if I can find any, um, any flowering plants and then maybe take a few relatively close-up stroke macro images of those thanks for joining me, hope you're going to enjoy it let's see what I can find well that didn't take long first flower that I found here is a wild prickly pear Look at those beautiful flowers. Unfortunately, the plant is not that healthy. You can see it's got a lot of cochineal on it. Um, but also, it's going to have a lot more flowers soon. So hopefully there will be some fruit as well for the, for the animals who so desperately need something to eat. But that's quite beautiful, the flower. Just look at that. Unfortunately, it's a little bit windy. And uh, I was planning on not using a, a flash today just a tripod mounted mounted shot so I'm gonna have to probably push up my ISO quite a bit to make sure I don't get any movement in the in the flowers but let's see what I can do you can see this is quite spectacular beautiful but I'm going to have to focus stack this a bit because I can't really go much above f8 due to the the movement I need to keep the shutter speed up I'm running ISO 400 at the moment f8 and I'll probably end up stacking about three images I think that is the furthest focus point then I that is actually the very furthest for the background then the center of the, the flower then round about the middle of the flower and something like that which gives me the, the flower petals closest to me um, let me take these images and see what I can get I actually love this one as well, um, this prickly pear flower, um, specifically because it's not alone. You can see you've got the flower and then you've got two more that are, that will be the next flowers for the, well I don't know how long, the next week or so I would, I would assume. So I can probably try and make some kind of a composition here with a, with a leading line with the small ones leading up to the larger one. But the colors are absolutely gorgeous. Unfortunately, the wind is still there, but uh, I'm just going to have to live with that. Look at this beautiful sample of the of the prickly pear flower. Absolutely gorgeous. With a few more flowers that will probably bloom in the next few days. But I absolutely love, I love the colors. Just hoping I can capture this with the movement. I'm not sure if I prefer the, the landscape orientation here for this image. Uh, of course it's more cropped on the video now because it's 16 by 9. Or if a portrait would maybe work. Something like that and then using the, the flower buds in the foreground uh, as a foreground point of interest uh, and the very very sharp thick thorns and then the flower in the background. I think I'm going to try it in portrait mode like this. Let's see what I can do. Oh, look at this cactus full of tiny little yellow flowers. Absolutely beautiful. And the whole area is covered with them. I think when they're in full flower, it's going to be quite spectacular. Last year, it was very dry and, and only a few of them flowered. But I can already see that a lot of them have started to flower now. So um, it's going to be quite spectacular. Well, I'm hoping I can stack this 
uh, or stack the images today because of the tiny amounts of movement due to the due to wind it might be a bit of an issue stacking I might end up using a, a professional package like Helicon Focus something like that but uh, hopefully I can get some good results I also want to get some really close-ups of these tiny flowers not just the whole image so uh, I'm going to try and uh, get really close with a macro lens I'm using a Sigma 150 f 2.8 macro so let's see what I can do with that Now what we have here is uh, what is called a speck boom. Translated that would be a bacon tree. I don't know why they call it a bacon tree because there's nothing bacon about it but it is a huge carbon scrubber and it generates a lot of oxygen and you can actually eat it the, the animals love it and uh, humans also they use it in all kinds of salads the leaves and uh, chutney and so on and as you can see it's got a lot of rather beautiful light pinkish flowers just look at the flowers covered in them far more flowers than last year I suppose the tiny bit of rain that we had in the last few days made a huge difference sitting on this rocky slope where even though it doesn't always get rain it does get some fog and condensation in the morning but um, beautiful sample of the plant and here you can see the actual flowers They're absolutely tiny perfect for the macro lens Well, I'm just taking a walk around here in this area. Got to be rather careful because the um, it's rather rocky and there's no footpath here. Got to be very careful that you don't trip over something. But uh, beautiful place, uh, lots of plants starting to flower. Most of the cactus are in flower, and uh, the speck boom, and of course the the wild prickly pear. But I'm sure there'll be more in the next week or two, so it'll be worthwhile coming back. I'm here on the windward side of a, a rocky outcrop uh, specifically seeing if there's anything else that's flowering but by the looks of it we only have the well basically three species flowering at the moment uh, unless I can find something else but uh, yes I've got to be really cautious yeah I've got to look down where I step all the time because uh, between the loose rocks um, this is also a well-known area for snakes so <laughs> got to be extra careful but yes a very nice area to explore with a with a camera specifically a macro lens here is also useful because other than the flowers of course we've got the beautiful lichens as you can see there on the trees at the moment they're rather dry but a tiny bit of rain and they, they change color completely Look at this nice clump of flowering cacti. Um, I'm showing you specifically this image because it shows the, a rather healthy plant, quite protected. But right in the middle, you've got that one dead piece that is curved, which is a nice makes a nice center point of interest. And then um, about 80% of the, the rest are flowering. But these are really tough conditions for the plants. Um, I'm actually shooting this with a macro lens. I had to stand back probably about five or six meters. Um, probably don't need to stack this one. F8 ISO 400. I'll probably go maybe to, yeah, I'll probably end up going to about F10 to try and make sure I've got enough de depth of field. Uh, around about a 400th of a second. clump of, of cact cactus cacti 
all the same Noorsfeld cactus uh, in flower. They're actually against the side of this rocky hill. There's a lot of them here. Yeah? And they all seem to be either in flower or getting ready to flower. So I think it's quite gorgeous. I think you can probably find a composition here. Um, I love the, the rocks in the foreground, background and then uh, the flowers themselves make kind of a, a bracket, a, a U or a, a L I should say, with the rocks in the middle with some lichen on them. So uh, simple composition, nothing complicated, but uh, shows the flowers rather well against the very harsh conditions. I'm here on the windward side of a, a rocky outcrop, uh, specifically seeing if there's anything else that's flowering, but by the looks of it we only have the, well basically three species flowering at the moment, uh, unless I can find something else, but uh, yes, I've got to be really cautious Yeah, I've got to look down where I step all the time, because uh, between the loose rocks um, this is also a well-known area for snakes, so <laughs> got to be extra careful. But yes, a very nice area to explore with a with a camera, specifically a macro lens here is also useful. Because other than the flowers, of course, we've got the beautiful lichens. As you can see there on the trees, at the moment they're rather dry, but a tiny bit of rain and they, they change color completely. We just climb up this little side of the hill here. Let's see what's closer towards the top. More rocks and more rocks. I'm pretty sure I can find a composition here somewhere at sunrise. Look at these rocks with the, the red brown rusty colored lichen on them. And then the flowering cactuses in the foreground. So, um, absolutely gorgeous. I don't think I've actually been here before, or to this exact spot anyway. So it was worth the explore. I know there's a shepherd's tree close by here that I've photographed on a couple of occasions, but uh, this rocky ledge is actually special by itself. Still trying to get to the top of this little hill. I had to take a detour uh, to get around a rather steep piece of rocks, rocky outcrop, stony ledge, oh, finally at the top, let me see what is on the other side here, it's interesting the other side is obviously doesn't get as much uh, fog in the morning and um, this is now the the side of the hill that's more inland and obviously it doesn't get as much moisture as the side that faces the ocean the side I just came from is actually um, the clouds roll in from the ocean and then they there's a lot of dew and, and condensation in this area and you do get quite a bit of uh, moisture in the mornings not specifically rain but at least it's wet so that's why the plants on the one side of the little hill are a lot greener and more luscious than on the other side they're flowering the side there's not much that's really flowering yet anyway trying not to fall while looking for flowers and other things of interest and in front there's a spot where I can see some bones lying don't know if you can see that I see a couple of bones wonder what it was ah. By the size of the bones, it's probably something like a jackal, I would guess. But it was a long time ago. There's no fur left. It's a couple of rib bones. A couple of... From the legs, and I see a couple of vertebrae from the, the back. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it was something like a jackal. That met, met its end over here. 
under this beautiful little shepherd's tree. Well, I'm going to take a slow walk back to the car, uh, going around the other side of the hill from where I originally started. Maybe uh, I'll find something else. But yes, this side of the hill is definitely a lot less lush than the other side, obviously a lot drier. It's amazing how in a couple of meters um, the vegetation can change so much. But uh, yes, the cacti are still trying to flower over here, but they are not in such a good condition. Still some uh, speckborn plants around here. Yeah? But a nice little walk, even if I don't find any other flowers. Uh, it's always nice taking a walk in nature and exploring. It's not that hot today. And I think when I got out of the car it was about 19 degrees Celsius, something like that. So that is actually quite convenient. I'd much prefer this round about, let's say, 18 to 22 than our more normal 32 to 42 this time of the year anyway. So yes, I found a tiny little, or a small little footpath. I'm not sure, it's probably made by animals. So I'm just going to take that to cross the, the side of the ridge again and walk down to where I was parked. I actually think this is quite a nice little composition. Uh, the shepherd's tree, uh, which is the main point of interest. But in the foreground we've got all those rocks. As you can see uh, running parallel, sticking out like that. And then in the background we've got a tiny hill mid-ground, I should say. And in the background those beautiful mountains with the clouds rolling over them. And some interest in the sky as well. So overall quite a nice little bonus image on my little flower shooting expedition. This just shows you should always look around. I came here armed with a macro lens to shoot some flowers and then I look up and I see a rather nice landscape. Some nice bushes in the foreground, close by foreground, and then mid, mid ground uh, I've got that row of rocks sticking out. Um, and then the main interest of course is the shepherd's tree just behind that and then in the in the distance we've got some beautiful clouds rolling over uh, the Bavihans mountains and then of course there's some interest in the sky as well a little bit of blue peeking out but at least it's not just uniform grey it's got some shape to it and I quite like the the foreground I'm probably gonna end up uh, shooting at least two images for focus stacking purposes not exactly the right lens that I've got here but uh, let me see if I can produce the image with this. Well, I think this is it for me this morning. I had a nice little walk. I saw well, three different plants flowering. I found some nice rock formations. Um, and a tree that I would like to shoot in the future as well, but specifically the rock formations along with some of the plants would work well for a sunrise or a sunset, so I just need one of those now. But I really appreciate you joining me again on my little adventure today. If you liked it, please click like. Uh, I would really appreciate that and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. If you want any more details on my images, photos, look in the description below. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day and stay safe.